Hello and welcome to the fifth section, Communicating with RESTful APIs. In the previous section, we learned how to persist our data using the MongoDB database. In this section, we will learn how to serve and consume RESTful APIs. First, we will learn what REST is, why we use it, what are the resources and methods in it. We will learn how Express.js helps to build RESTful APIs, how to plan your API, and what authentication choices are available for an API. Then, we will dive into how to consume REST API on the server using the API module, the native HTTP module and API REST client module. We will learn how to document our API, how to retrieve and manipulate data from an API on the client side. Last but not least, we will see how to provide CRUD through REST and how to aggregate our data. Now, we move on to the first video of this section that deals with RESTful APIs. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. REST is the software architectural style of the World Wide Web. It provides constraints which can be used to build REST web services for providing access to your data. The REST has the following constraints. Client server means that uniform interface should separate clients from servers. This separation means that clients don't care how data is stored on the server and server doesn't care what user interface the client is using. As long as they follow the interface, clients and servers can be developed separately. Stateless means that no context should be stored on the server, and each request should contain all the data required to process it. Cacheable means that responses must define how the client could cache the response if it chooses to. Layered system means that clients can't tell if they are connected to a server directly or not. This enables one to add intermediary servers that improve the system performance or security. Code on demand is the only optional constraint that implies that an API can return code which can be executed by the client. The uniform interface is for simplifying and decoupling. It is fundamental in REST. All the rules are flexible, which most often leads to a lot of arguments. To be on the safe side, most of the time it's better to refer to your API as RESTful. This means that it implements some of the constraints, but not all of them. What are the reasons you might want to make a REST API? It uses uniform interface and separates concerns. This allows you to reach a large number of developers who can consume your API. As long as the consumer and provider follow defined constraints, the clients and the API can be developed separately. By adding proxies, you can make an API easy to scale. You can wrap legacy applications or multiple applications under a single API to extend the functionality of those applications. It's simple to produce and consume RESTful APIs. REST APIs work by executing an action on the resource. Each resource should be unique and identified by the URI. You will want to avoid using auto-incrementing IDs for resources as it enables to scrape and exploit your data. MongoDB provides us with IDs which are hard to guess. Otherwise, you might want to use Universal Unique Identifier. It might be tempting to use singular form when talking about a single resource, but it immediately becomes a headache. It's simple with resources like user or event, which become users or events for collections of resource. It would get a lot more complicated if, for example, we had to manage which city is the event in. For a single resource, it would be city. And for a collection, it would be cities. Just use plural to make your life easier and less confusing. 
the actions you take on the resource are based on the HTTP methods. The method can be safe or idempotent. Safe means that it won't change the resource. Idempotent means that executing it in multiple times won't change the response, but it can change the resource. The delete method is a special case, as it would depend on how your application implements the removal of resources. The HTTP method maps to the CRUD operations. You will be using GET to retrieve resources and DELETE to remove them. The POST is used for creating new resources and PUT for updating them. Here are some examples of what your API might enable your consumers to do, depending on the method and resource. GET slash events will return a list of events. GET slash events slash x will return the event with the provided ID. GET slash events slash x, y, z will return the list of multiple events requested by the consumer. DELETE slash event slash x will delete an event with the provided ID. DELETE slash events slash x slash feedbacks will delete all feedbacks associated with an event. POST slash events will create a new event. PUT slash events slash x will update an event with the provided ID. There is a lot more to the REST APIs than the scope of this course allows. Congratulations! You should now have a basic understanding of how REST APIs work. If you're interested in learning more about REST APIs, I would suggest a great book on this topic by Phil Sturgeon. In this video, we learned what is REST, why use it, what are the resources and methods in it.